So there is a reasonable consensus in the neuroscience community that at least one of the mechanisms that allow animals to change their behaviors in response to the environment uh, and to perform higher order functions such as learning and memory has to do with a fundamental property of the synaptic connections within their brain, which is their ability to change, a process that has been named synaptic plasticity. Therefore, a great deal of effort has been placed in trying to uh, identify some of the signals that allow synapses to change uh, and to be formed. Studies in several systems, such as mice and fruit flies, show that one of the mechanisms is provided by the secretion of a family of proteins or members of a family of proteins, which are the wind. Wind family of proteins were initially discovered for their role in pattern formation during embryonic development. In the embryo, distinct set of cells produce and secrete winds. Secreted winds then form a concentration gradient along the embryonic segments. Developmental fates of these cells are determined by differential gene expression programs that are activated in a wind concentration dependent manner. At neuromuscular synapses of fruit flies, a wind named wingless is secreted in an activity dependent manner from the presynaptic terminal and interacts with presynaptic and postsynaptic receptors, which leads to synapse differentiation and growth. The finding that secreted winds also function in the nervous system to regulate synapse differentiation and synaptic plasticity suggests that a similar mechanism can be utilized in multiple contexts to specify cellular properties such as cell fate determination in the embryo or synapse regulation in adult brain. Although we know quite a bit about the transaction pathways activated by winds during embryonic development or synapse development, much less is known about the mechanisms by which winds are released and mobilized across cells to influence synapse development. In the nervous system, there are two main ways by which signals are transmitted. The exocytosis of synaptic vesicles containing neurotransmitters and the propagation of electrical currents across gap junctions. However, it's unlikely that winds are transmitted by the above mechanisms. A primary problem is that wind molecules despite being predicted to be hydrophilic based on their primary amino acid sequence, they are modified post-translationally by lipid moieties such as palmitate groups, which make them highly hydrophobic and not easily diffusible in the extracellular space. This raises the question of how winds are transported across cells to form a gradient in the embryo or to cross to the postsynaptic site at synapses where the wind receptors are localized. In our study in this issue of cell, we substantiate a novel mechanism for the transmission of a wind signal across the synapse. We show that wind rides on a vesicle through binding with a transmembrane protein EV present in the vesicle. Unlike classical exocytosis of soluble neurotransmitters, the wind EV vesicle is released as an intact vesicle, which travels to the postsynaptic site to present wind to its receptor and to carry out other functions in the postsynaptic cell. Interestingly, this mechanism is also used in the immune system, in which exosome vesicles containing membrane proteins required for antigen recognition are released by immune cells. So these studies are highly significant uh, in at least two regards. First of all, they provide a previously unrecognized mechanism by which a signal can travel across the synaptic cleft which is the release of an intact vesicle. And second, they uh, provide a mechanism by which hydrophobic proteins, such as winds, can travel in the extracellular space.